There are a number of items we're going to have to deal with. Um, firstly, we'll be dealing with the power connections. The power connections are here and here. The top power is in from the power supply and the bottom connection is power out to the next VESDA detector. Okay, so these are connected via the two-way connectors here and here. After the power connection, we've got, we're able to plug a USB cable into the detector. This USB port is up here in the top right, just like so. We also have above the USB connector, we've got an Ethernet port. So the Ethernet port is located at this point here and I'll bring an Ethernet cable in through the top of the detector through one of the knockouts that it's taken out and I can plug my Ethernet port in this way. Okay. So after the Ethernet port we've got a Wi-Fi module down here which we we'll, can enable with programming. Now the VESDA network is the next part that we need to interface to the detector. Here I've pre-wired some VESDANET cables. So the final task we have is once all the cabling is verified and in place is power up the detector. Then we can watch the detector boot up and commence all of our test procedures. Okay, so to summarise the connections, on the top here my VESDANET communications ports A and B and my Ethernet cable. I've chosen to bring those into the detector from the top, separate from all of the power and relay connections. So through the bottom here I've brought my two power connections, power in, power out. This uh, green cable here, green and black cable is for the monitor general purpose input. And these two red cables here coming in the bottom are my relay contacts which interface to my fire alarm control panel.